次にペーパーマリオ紙のようなペラペラな世界で冒険を繰り広げるペーパーマリオの世界は任天堂 t e n d 3 d s の立体紙と相性が大変よく重なり合う表現というのが分かりやすくなるのと同時にどんどん新しいゲームのギミックも生まれていく表現がリッチになることが単にそこにとどまるのではなくてゲーム性の拡張にもそのまま生きるというのは魅力的なゲームができる時の大変良い流れですので来年の発売をどうぞご期待
Now, Mario has always been one of the most beloved and recognized characters in video games. But about a decade ago, players began to see him in a slightly different way. The reason was the arrival of Paper Mario, a game that added a role-playing element to the action, and a Mario who seemed like he was built with nothing more than a paintbrush and a pair of scissors. Now, Paper Mario himself is evolving, not only due to 3D, but also because of a simple but strategic new element, stickers. The game environments still seem like shoebox dioramas, but this all new Paper Mario world is plastered with innocent looking stickers. But they're not just for display. You'll collect them by pulling them off the scenery and they become your battle commands. Choose a shoe sticker to stomp on an enemy or a hammer sticker to whack away. They can also help reveal new ways to escape danger in the game or to find secret places as well as hidden items. This Paper Mario retains all the fun of the originals, but with even more game depth. So Paper Mario Sticker Star arrives both, phys both physically and digitally this holiday season. Uh, so Scott just mentioned that this is the first Paper Mario um, to appear on a handheld, and it was really made to appear on this handheld. Um, everything about the Paper Mario aesthetic from you know foldable characters to pop-up scenery, it all contributes to the feeling of like a living, breathing diorama that's living inside your 3DS. I know you can't see it from where you're sitting, but trust me, it really, really pops. Um, and just uh, before I really get into this, uh, a little bit about me. Um, I, this franchise holds a very special place in my heart. The North American localization of the original Paper Mario for the N64 was actually the first game that I ever did the English writing for. And I've worked on every game in the series since, so I love it. Um, Intelligent Systems has always packed these games full of hilarious characters, really, really creative and unique scenarios. Um, and this one is no different in that sense. Um, but what they've also done is they've always done something new for each iteration. Um, and in this particular case, that's something new is stickers. Um, I'm going to give you a little preview. This guy just ambushed me while I was talking, so I'm going to uh, wail on him really quickly. Ignore what you're seeing here, because I'll be describing it in great detail in one moment. Yeah, that, that didn't just happen. This guy's just going to take real quick. Okay. And yes, we're done with that. All right, so stickers, that's what I was talking about. They're everywhere in this game. Uh, they're stuck to walls, they're behind bushes, they are carried by enemies. Um, you really have to scour the environment for them because they are uh, your bread and butter in the game. You can actually see here, Bowser used a little piece of like police tape sticker to hold down a piece of the environment to try to prevent me from getting up here, but of course he failed. Um, you're really gonna need stickers for everything, and the most important thing you'll need them for is battling. So now I'll get into a real battle, uh, the way I meant to before. So you can see this is very familiar for Paper Mario Vets, right? Um, it's a turn-based battle system where you'll see guys wandering around the stage. You can get in fights with them if you start the fight effectively by jumping on them. Obviously, you get the first hit in. Um, if not, it's, it goes rather poorly for you. But once you get in here, it's, it's time to, to pick, your, pick your battles, basically. And ordinarily in a Paper Mario game, you would pick from a menu here of, of attacks. But here, stickers control the entire show. Offensive, defensive, everything. And you can see down here on the bottom screen, I got a whole album full of them. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what that door does right now. Instead, I'll just uh, do a typical jump on this guy. And uh, the action battle system remains and is as good as ever. You have to be paying attention at all times. The timely button presses allowed me to just wail on that guy and then allowed me to block the attacks. Um, obviously, I still took a little damage, but it allowed me to lessen the attacks of these, uh, these Goombas. And strategy comes into play big time. So, you know, for this one, I, I don't wanna absorb any more attacks, so I'm gonna actually use an attack that I think can probably take care of both of them at the same time. A couple of good time presses and wipe them out with a Koopa shell. Um, battles will produce coins, they'll produce more stickers. Um, in this case, I got some coins. Both of those uh, you need to collect a lot of over the course of this game for reasons that I'll explain in just a little bit. Uh, first, I wanna show you another element of this game. You can see over here this fan, this does not look like it lives in a paper world. This actually looks like it was ripped directly out of our world. And there are a number of items like this uh, in the game. 
All of them are important for, for very sort of specific reasons that I'll get into later, um, but you really want to scour every single environment to see how many of them you can find. All right, now uh, indulge me for a second while I run back over here and uh, take a look at that area I was in before. You saw before when I went up here that there was a big breeze blowing, that's because the fan was on. I turned the fan off, so now everything's mellow over here, but the casualties were this toad's flowers, um, which he lost, uh, and I can help him out. I mean, it's kind of funny that he's there crying, but I think I'm going to be nice to him instead. Um, and I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to use a, a power called paperization. By hitting the Y button here, I just froze the scene and turned it sideways. And you can do this anywhere. Um, you can take a look at whatever's in the environment. In this particular case, you can see that there's some spots down there that uh, look like they could use some stickers. So, of course, this guy lost some flowers. So I'll use some of my attack flowers here to see if I can replace them. Gotta stick it on there nice and good. That's a, that's an ice flower. And then um, maybe do a fire flower here. And then uh, I'll finish it off with a, I'll do a shiny fire flower. Shiny ones, of course, for those of you who are avid sticker collectors, shiny is better. All right, so those look like they're taking root there and Flowers. And you can see it didn't just bloom his flowers, it actually threw up a whole bunch of stickers that I can collect to replenish what I just kind of spent on him. Um, and even more so, I got, you know, I, I used three and got six back. Um, more importantly, this guy is so psyched that I helped him out that he's actually giving me a really important item. This is a, an HP up heart. And this is actually going to boost my maximum HP. Now, those of you guys who are vets of this series probably noticed in that earlier battle that I didn't actually get any experience points, um, which is weird. Uh, for the Paper Mario series, you're obviously used to, to getting experience points. You're still going to have this sort of RPG leveling up um, experience in this game, but it's going to be gotten in a different way. You have to solve people's problems, like I just did on oh, losing all those stickers. Um, you have to, you know, solve puzzles in the environment. You have to scour all these areas to find hidden nooks and crannies and um, find secret sticker caches. Um, you really just need to look around, and that's the way that you're going to boost your, your album size, you're going to boost Mario's health, you're going to boost your attacks. So, pardon me for, well, for a second, I'm going to use a little bit of magic of pre-production software to uh, jump to another area. Obviously won't be able to do this in the final game. Um, now I am actually right outside of the main town in the game. And uh, this area features this very perky toad who has a, a stall that does um, a very, has a very, very important role in the game. So when you're going through and you're collecting these real world items, you can eventually bring them back to this spot and maybe some other spots in the game. This guy's got a great stall, and he's uh, instructing me to sling my thing up there. Now you can see I actually have more than just the fan in my inventory. I got a couple things here. Uh, those, all, <laughs> those are all wonderful items, and there are a ton of them in the game, but I'm gonna use the fan for now, huck it up there and turn it into a sticker. And now you can see that, that's a big sticker. Um, it takes up a lot of space in my inventory, so you're gonna have to manage your sticker loadout, as it were. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it should be big, because it's really, really powerful. If I use that in battle, it would completely destroy whoever uh, I was using it on. But typically, these special items also have a very, very specific purpose in advancing the, the story of the game. So um, I'm once again going to use magic and hop out to where we can uh, make use of this fan. Well, hopefully that guy's not gonna get to, no, don't attack me. All right, so here we have a windmill. Uh, there's no wind. So let's uh, go into paperizing mode. And you can see there's a spot for a big old sticker there, so we'll, we'll pop the fan on. Stick it down, let's see what happens. Problem solved. They told me I wasn't allowed to make a Mario's biggest fan joke here. I thought it was good. I... Anyway, so you can see uh, now the blades have turned and I can actually access this windmill. It, it's not only sort of obvious spots like that that you'll want to paperize and use stickers. Um, you really want to look anywhere suspicious in the world. There's a lot of places where even a small sticker, you know, an ordinary jump sticker might net you something cool. Um, you're really just gonna have to explore the world to find those spots. 
Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna go in there uh, because there are spoilers in there and you guys don't wanna see too many of those. Instead, I wanna just pick one more fight here and show you one other really, really important mechanic. So there's, there's not a ton of dudes in this, in this fight. There's only two of them, but you are gonna run into pretty big battles in this game with you know, five Goombas at a time or you know, a really, really massive enemy that can do a ton of damage to you if he can attack. And in these instances, you're really gonna want to use more than one sticker per turn. Um, and to do so, you're going to have to spend some coins, which is why you wanna collect a lot of coins. Uh, and you have to have a little bit of luck. So by using the battle spinner down here, um, I'm gonna try to hit a jackpot. Come on, oh, all right. Well, I didn't hit a jackpot, but I got two at least. If I'd, hit, if I'd hit all three coins right there, I essentially would have gotten showered with coins as well as getting to use three stickers on this particular turn. Um, as it happens, I can at least use two of them. So why don't we do, uh, I'll chuck a hammer at this guy and then use a slap hammer on this other one. That'll do. Oh, that guy really quick. So, so a lot of the strategy comes down to how you're gonna manage your stickers when you have a whole bunch of guys in a line. Um, it's really, really crucial that, well, you get lucky a little bit, but also that you uh, use your, your coins wisely.